Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, Madison High School instituted a course in automobile driving a short time ago, and our Miss Brooks, who teaches English there, was put in charge. She's had over a week to get used to her additional duties, but she still isn't very happy about them. And why should I be? Most of the students who enroll in the course take one lesson and then drive as if they're on the Indianapolis Speedway. <laughs> as a teacher, I've never minded marking my pupils, but I have a definite aversion to having them mark me. <laughs> Last Thursday at breakfast, my landlady offered a few consoling remarks. I know it's a lot of additional work, Connie, but think of the satisfaction involved. Not just to you, but to the entire profession. You mean the medical profession? <laughs> <laughs> no, the teaching profession. Look what you're doing to help the traffic problem. Well, I have eased the traffic problem a bit. Since I started teaching, there are at least ten fewer cars on the road. <laughs> It's not only traffic, Connie. Your students learn courtesy to pedestrians, too. Oh, you're right about that, Mrs. Davis. That's one thing I absolutely insist on. Each of my pupils must take a half hour off to visit the hospital his particular pedestrian is in. <laughs> you can... You can kid if you like, Connie, but you're doing a fine service, and you should enjoy doing it. I wonder how you'd enjoy teaching a student like Stretch Snodgrass, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> Is it difficult for Stretch to drive a car? It's difficult for Stretch to spell car. <laughs> he almost got me into a real jam the other day. We got into some heavy traffic, and I asked him to let me have the wheel. How did that get you into a jam? He took it off and handed it to me. <laughs> I'll get used to it, I suppose <laughs> Of course you will Now, you finish eating, Connie I've got some chores to do out in the kitchen Want any more of anything? No, thanks There are still some slices of French toast left over I hate to see them wasted That's Walter Denton They won't be wasted <laughs> Come on in, Walter The latch is off Miss Brooks, we who are about to die Salute you <laughs> Salute acknowledged what do you want with your French toast, sugar or jam? Oh, didn't you hear me, Miss Brooks? I am the bearer of extremely tragic tidings. I'm sure they can wait until you've had a little breakfast. Now sit down. All right. But I had one breakfast at home, and then I just stopped by Harriet Conklin's house, and she insisted I have another breakfast with her. Oh, I see. So I'll just eat a couple of these plain. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Walter. Now, don't try to talk while you're eating. I don't want to hear a word out of you until you're all finished. So be it. Ah, it's like this, Miss Brooks. <laughs> as you know, Miss Brooks, I am the manager of the Madison High School Orchestra. And as you also know, this is the weekend of the big music festival at Oakhurst, uh, wherein the high school bands from all over the state compete for a silver cup. Go on. Now, I'm well aware of the fact that you have your own problems, Miss Brooks. But you've always been interested in mine in the past, and it is my fond hope that you continue to be interested in them, especially this one. Are you interested, Miss Brooks? I'm so interested, it frightens me. <laughs> but please get to the point a little more rapidly, Walter. Well, okay. The point is, our beloved principal, old Marblehead Conklin... I mean, Mr. Conklin, he insists on going on this trip and playing his tuba with the band. Mr. Conklin wants to play with the band? Yes, ma'am. I've stood for many things from that man, but his tuba is just too much for me to swallow. <laughs> Especially after three breakfasts. <laughs> Walter, I didn't think faculty members were eligible to play in the band. Well, they're not, but he thinks he can get by on a technicality. You see, Jason Brill, the principal of Clay City High, got special permission last year to do a violin solo with their band. And Mr. Conklin feels that anything Mr. Brill can do with his violin... He can do with his tuba. <laughs> I'd like to hear him try Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Miss Brooks. He sneaked into band practice so often lately that they're practically ruined. Unless they get to practice by themselves in Oakhurst, our chances for winning are sub-nil. 
That's about as poor as chances can get. Is the band going up to Oakhurst after school today? Yes, ma'am. And you've got to see that they go without Mr. Conklin and his 39 pounds of stale plumbing. <laughs> but why me, Walter? Because someone very near and dear to your heart has the interest of the band very near and dear to his heart. You mean? None other. <laughs> since when is Mr. Boynton so interested in music? Well, since he bet Mr. DeWitt, my history teacher, that Madison would win the band contest. But Mr. Boynton doesn't bet. He's opposed to gambling. He won't take a chance on anything. More's the pity. <laughs> oh, he didn't bet money. Just a new hat. Mr. Boynton doesn't wear hats, Walter. The hat isn't for him, it's for you. He wants you to have it for Christmas. Of course, I just happen to be eavesdropping at the proper time. This is all a big surprise. Yes, it is, wasn't it? <laughs> I'd like to see the band win the contest too, Walter. Hat or no hat, Mr. Boynton or no Mr. Boynton. Let's not go overboard. But what I'm trying to say, Walter, is this. How can we keep Mr. Conklin from playing in Oakhurst with the band? There's only one way, Miss Brooks. By sabotaging his tuba. That's a very hard instrument to replace. After all, tubas don't grow on trees. It's a good thing they don't. <laughs> if Isaac Newton had been hit by a tuba instead of an apple, we wouldn't have any gravity today. <laughs> Brooks, going into Daddy's office? Yes, Harriet. What kind of a mood is he in? Very good for Daddy. <laughs> He's practicing on his tuba. I just came out of his office. With that wind behind you, I'll bet you came out faster than you went in. <laughs> Daddy got a new teacher last week. He's really working at it this time. Who's he taking lessons from, Jack Benny? <laughs> no, ma'am. As close as I can recall, his teacher's name is Pendarvis T. Marleybone. That's close enough. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I know that Daddy wants to play with our band in the contest, but confidentially, I don't think he'll help their chances any. So if you can think of any way... I've been to... all through this with Walter Denton, Harriet. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a very important date. A date? Yes, with 39 pounds of stale plumbing. See you later, dear. <laughs> Good luck, Miss Brooks. Let me know how you come out. Stick around. You might have to catch me. <laughs> come in. I know you're practicing, Mr. Conklin, and I don't like to disturb you, That's but... very considerate, Miss Brooks. Good day. <laughs> But I couldn't help stopping by to wish you luck with the band contest. Well, thank you, Miss Brooks. What selection have you chosen for your solo? I thought I'd try something a little out of the ordinary for my particular instrument. The flight of the bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, think that would be effective? Oh, yes, sir. That should really knock him deaf. A dead. <laughs> If I keep very quiet, would you mind letting me stand here and listen to you practice? There's time before my class begins. I didn't know you were so interested in music, Miss Brooks. Oh, yes, indeed. And the tuba's my favorite instrument. <laughs> really? Since when? Since I first heard you play one. I'll never forget that day, Mr. Conklin. It was about six weeks ago. I passed by the music room, and you were playing the beautiful Blue Danube. But, but how can you remember so clearly... The rest of the band was playing Kiss Me Again. <laughs> that is, they soon realized their mistake, and you all played beautifully together. <laughs> so much so, Mr. Conklin, that lately I've been thinking of taking up the tuba again. Uh, again? Yes, sir. I took several lessons on it when I was a little girl. <laughs> but isn't a tuba an awfully heavy instrument for a little girl? That's what my mother thought. So I took the lessons on a piccolo. <laughs> I never did get anywhere, though. I guess there just wasn't any incentive. But now that I have a virtuoso right in the same school, well, would you give me a few pointers, Mr. Conklin? Well, Miss Brooks, I... <laughs> I have a friend who played the tuba with the Philharmonic. 
I could ask him, I suppose, but I figure why take lead when you can get platinum? <laughs> oh, you're so right. <laughs> What would you like to know, my dear? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to start with the fundamentals. It's been months since I was a little girl. <laughs> How do you hold the tuba, maestro? Well, here, I I'll show you. Just take it in your left arm. Like this? Uh, uh, not quite. Hold it more as if it were a baby. There, now, have you got it? Have you got a firm grip on it? No, sir. <laughs> oh, dear, I've ruined your wonderful tuba. Oh, let's see it. Let's see. Oh, thank goodness there's no damage done. None whatsoever. I guess I was pressing. <laughs> uh, please, Mr. Conklin, could I take another crack at it? I mean... <laughs> would you show me the proper way to hold it? But, uh, I've told you, Miss Brooks, hold it like you would a baby. Like this? Yes, yes, only not so high. And you've got to have such a, a, a much firmer, a much... Uh, ch 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 careful, Miss Brooks. <laughs> if that's how you'd hold a baby, it's a good thing you're not a nurse. <laughs> is your beautiful tuba ruined this time? Yes, Miss Brooks, it is. There's a big crack in the bell, and the mouthpiece is jammed into the horn. It'll take a week to repair it. Oh, then you won't be able to play in the contest tomorrow. Oh, yes, I will. I can borrow a tuba from a friend of mine in Oakhurst. Fortunately, his instrument is out of your reach. 450 miles from here. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin. Darn these short arms. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. Water toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Clean your breath. What a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate dental cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. Better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream and Clean. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, by the time I met Mr. Boynton in the cafeteria for lunch, I still hadn't thought of a way to keep Mr. Conklin from playing with the band. Just before I went up to get my dessert, I told Mr. Boynton of my dilemma, hoping he might be able to help. As always, he paid rapt attention to what I was saying, then came up with a brilliant suggestion. Why not try the cherry pie today, Miss Brooks? <laughs> <laughs> Either you haven't been listening, or I've been talking through my lima beans. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Mr. Boynton, is that so far, Mr. Conklin is still going to perpetrate his tuba with the school band. Well, there must be something we can do to stop him. This means quite a bit to me, personally. Really? In what way, Mr. Boynton? Well, I'm, I'm unalterably opposed to gambling, as you know, but in this instance, I did make a small wager with Mr. DeWitt that our school would win the Oakhurst contest. A wager? You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's just the price of a new hat. Oh, what a cute idea. How much does the bet amount to in cash? Oh, it isn't important, really. Just the thought behind it that counts. That's very true, but... Just for kicks, how much money is at stake? Well, two dollars. <laughs> Seems like enough. 
I can surely get a one propeller job for that. <laughs> but to get back to Mr. Conklin, Walter told me in class that the band was going up in individual cars. And Mr. Conklin's going in one of them? No, Walter's seen to it that each car is completely filled with students and instruments. There's just no room for Mr. Conklin. Well, that's promising. His own car was pretty badly banged up last week, wasn't it? Yes, but it's in the school auto shop and should be ready today. Should it? Yes, it shouldn't. <laughs> Say, you might have an idea there, Mr. Boynton. Uh, who's been working on his car, Miss Brooks? Probably someone very competent, but Stretch Snodgrass also spends a lot of time in the shop. <laughs> and Stretch Snodgrass isn't the most brilliant student at school, is he? No, Stretch Snodgrass isn't the most brilliant student at school. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass may not be the most brilliant, but he's sure loaded with charm. <laughs> fellow we wanted to see. Pull up a chair, Stretch. Uh, yes, take this chair right here. In a minute. I ain't et yet. <laughs> Please, Stretch. I haven't eaten yet. Well, you're on a diet. I ain't. <laughs> Gosh, I can't decide what to take today. I'm in a real mental quarry. <laughs> Please, one marble head in school is enough. <laughs> What's the reason for your quandary, Stretch? I can't decide whether to take the chicken a la king, the lamb stew, or the meatloaf. Why don't you wait till tomorrow and take the corned beef hash? Then you'll get all three. <laughs> Say, that's a swell idea. Wait till tomorrow and get all three. Boy, you sure got plenty of brains up there in your chromium. <laughs> You know, your gray matter. I bet you got some twisty curves in your cerebellum. <laughs> well, I guess my Sarah's as curvy as the next one. <laughs> but Stretch, what we wanted to ask you about was Mr. Conklin's car. Yes, is it all ready to roll? Sure. What do you want me to roll it? This boy is psychic. <laughs> now, we've got to be careful. Now, when Mrs. Mr. Conklin lets us use his car for Madison's new driving class last week, it got pretty badly banged up, didn't it, Stretch? Uh, but now that it's all fixed, it could be used to give one more lesson, couldn't it? And what better pupil could we have to take the lesson than Stretch? I'll meet you out front in ten minutes. Not so fast, Miss Brooks. First, I gotta eat. Of course you do. And I want you to eat a nice, leisurely meal, Stretch. But there's one thing I want to tell you before you bolt down a sandwich. When you go to the garage to get the car, be sure and back it out care carefully. Okay, Miss Brooks. I'll see you in front of the school in about ten minutes. Now be sure and back it out of the garage, Stretch. I will. Well, Miss Brooks, if you're meeting Stretch in ten minutes, you better get your dessert. Oh, there's no hurry, Mr. Boynton. I don't think I'll have to give Stretch a lesson if he obeys instructions. What do you mean? You heard me tell him to back the car out of the garage, didn't you? Yes. Well, after the accident the other day, I backed it in. <laughs> Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, I don't like to disturb your lunch, but I gotta talk to you. We're all finished, Walter. What is it? Well, I just came from the school garage. Mr. Conklin's been in to look at his car. How did he find it? He just scraped the back wall with a pen knife, and there it was. <laughs> Stretch Snodgrass did something horrible again. Good old Stretch. Now Mr. Conklin won't be able to drive up for the band contest. But that's what you think. He's going on the 6 p.m. train. He'll be there first thing in the morning. But that'll be disastrous. If he gets to practice with the band, we're sunk. Don't I know it. Miss Brooks, we, we've got to put our heads together. You're right, Mr. Boynton. Goodbye, Walter. <laughs> You've got to concentrate on the immediate problem. Your long range aims can wait. <laughs> I mean, you've just got to keep Mr. Conklin from making that train. Yes, but how? Well, I don't know. All I know is he says he never sleeps very well on trains. So he's going home right after school and take a nap. A nap? Wait a minute. I think I've got something. Come closer, Mr. Boynton. Yes, Miss Brooks? Still closer. Like this? Goodbye, Walter. <laughs> Look, here's the idea. If he's going to take a nap, maybe we can set the clocks back in his house so that when he wakes up, he'll think it's much earlier and miss the train. But is that the only train to Oakhurst today? Definitely. Oh, what an idea. 
Miss Brooks, I'd give a hundred dollars for the right to x-ray the remarkable gray matter in your cranial cavity. Why, Walter, what a lovely thing to say about the cerebellum in my chromium. <laughs> He's asleep, Walter. Daddy's fast asleep on the couch. I don't know how he can sleep with all that noise he's making. <laughs> sure hate to be your mother. I wouldn't like that arrangement either. Now, you set back that clock over there, and I'll take care of this one on the mantel. Okay. Let's see. It's ten after five now. I'll just set it back an hour. I'll do the same with this one. Then we'll take care of the clocks upstairs and in the kitchen. Check. Oh, did you leave the front door open for Miss Brooks? She's coming over to help divert your daddy's attention until train time. It's open, Walter. Now, you take the library clock, and I'll go up to the bedroom to see that everything is set up all right in that room. <laughs> this way, Stretch. Mr. Conklin's asleep on the couch. Good. Now, you want me to set this clock back an hour, right? Right. I'll set this one back on the mantel. There. Gosh, this sounds like an angry sea lion. I think he's waking up. I thought it was a car backfiring. Well, I better get out of here. Mr. Conklin and me aren't on terms. Miss Brooks, it's not grass. Oh, don't, don't get up, Mr. Conklin. Just lie there and relax. We'll all pull up chairs and chat with you for a while. Uh, chat with me? But why? I've... Snodgrass, there's something I'd like to ask you. I thought there might be. <laughs> Did you have anything to do with wrecking my car this afternoon? I'd rather not answer that question, sir. Why not? Because my parents brought me up not to be no liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta go to football practice now. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. See you soon, Mr. Conklin, I guess. Uh, it's just as well he left. I shouldn't upset my temperament before the band concert. By the way, it must be getting toward train time. Oh, no, you've got loads of time, Mr. Conklin. Oh, what time is it? It's 3.15. See, by that clock over there? 3.15? That's peculiar. What's peculiar? As I recall, I didn't lie down until 3.30. <laughs> uh, well, you know how swiftly time passes when you're sleeping. <laughs> It might pass swiftly, but it doesn't pass backwards. <laughs> Look outside, it's almost dark. Oh, hadn't you heard? There's an eclipse of the sun today. <laughs> Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Miss Brooks. I hope you didn't wake up old Marblehead. Ooh, hi there, Miss Brooks. How are you? Have a nice nap. How's every little old thing? Oh, quiet! <laughs> what time do you have, Harriet? Oh, you've got plenty of time, Daddy. It's only 4.15. 4.15? But Miss Brooks says it's 3.15. That's a democracy for you. Everyone's entitled to his own time. <laughs> now, see here, I've got to know just where I stand with that train. It's 4.15, Mr. Conklin. <clears throat> That's what the time is, actually. Then why did you keep insisting that it was 3.15? Once I've had a taste of daylight saving, I'm a very hard loser. <laughs> Excuse me, but the door was open, so I just... Oh, come in, come in, Boynton, come in. Will you please tell me what time it is? Oh, certainly, sir, it's... It's 3.15. 4 <laughs> no, it's 5.30. Well, that's what makes horse races. Five... Five <laughs> thirty? Then I haven't a minute to lose. It's a half-hour drive to the station from here. Fortunately, I'm off act. Hand me that valise, somebody. Here you are, Mr. Conklin. Oh! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. Did it catch your toes? Just a few of them, Mr. <laughs> now, I've got to get out of here. Uh, Boynton, did you drive over here? Uh, yes, sir, but my car... It's it... too late for me to call a cab now. Will you drive me? Me? Well, uh, I'd like to, sir, but I've got a very important engagement in two minutes. It's vital, sir, and uh, I... Would you like me to drive you? <laughs> Miss Brooks, I can only answer that query by remarking that there is nothing more useless than a dead tuba player. <laughs> no, no. If you don't mind, Boynton, I'll borrow your car and drive myself to the station. Well, I, I guess that'll be all right, Mr. Conklin. It's parked right in front of the house. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Daddy. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin.
There's one more favor I'd like to ask of you, Boynton. Yes, Mr. Conklin? May I borrow the keys? (laughs) Certainly. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Mr. Boynton, how could you do this to us and to yourself? Mr. Conklin will make that train to Oakhurst easily now. Oh, no, he won't, Miss Brooks. The reason I came over here this afternoon was to borrow a few dollars. What for? For gasoline. <laughs> There's enough gas in my car to take it another eight blocks. Mr. Boynton, I could kiss you. So could I. Back away, children. He's been spoken for. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid... Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean. Free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen. Soft. Manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, by dinner time, Mr. Conklin hadn't returned, and we assumed that Mr. Boynton's car had run out of gas, and Mr. Conklin had run out of time, and missed the train to Oakhurst. But the next morning at breakfast, the phone rang, and Mrs. Davis answered. Hello. Yes. Who? Yes, just a minute. Honey, it's for you. It's a message from Oakhurst. Hello? This is Connie Brooks. What's the message, please? (laughs) Yes, but what are you going to do for an encore? This is Vern Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Lustre Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that Palmolive soap facials, using nothing but Palmolive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with Palmolive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging Palmolive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your Palmolive facials today. Remember, doctors prove Palmolive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 